Hey, good evening and welcome back to Answers on Eschatology. My name is Dan Derry and I'm the president of the Institute of Fulfilled Eschatology. <clears throat> hey, I want to share some uh, thoughts with you this evening on <clears throat> what, I what I will call the parable of the judgment or the parable of the sheep and the goats, <clears throat> Matthew 25, 31 and following. And this video, <clears throat> as, I, as I usually do, I will just, uh, I will set an introduction uh, to, this, to this parable. We will, we will establish the context and specifically... I simply want to establish the time limitation that Scripture, by comparing Scripture with Scripture, places upon this judgment at the coming of the Son of Man. <clears throat> so, go with me to Matthew 25, verse 31. I'm going to read simply this one verse. We're going to put a, pu pull out four elements, okay? Specifically, four eschatological elements, end time elements. And we're going to compare this Scripture... Matthew 25, 31, with two other New Testament texts, uh, which, <clears throat> which carry the same four elements, but those two other texts clearly place the fulfillment of all those elements in the first century generation. Okay, so Matthew 25, verse 31 says this, But when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Okay, stop right there. We have four elements present in this te text. <clears throat> Num number one, we have the coming of the Son of Man. Number two, <clears throat> it is his coming in glory. Okay, so the glory of the Lord is the second element. The third element <clears throat> is with his angels. Okay, the angels accompany him at his coming. And the fourth element is the establishment of the kingdom, or simply the kingdom. So once again, the four elements that we see in this in this parable that sets the context for the parable are number one, the coming of the Son of Man, number two, in his glory, number three, with the angels, and four, to establish the kingdom. Okay? Go with me now back to Matthew chapter 24, a familiar, <laughs> a familiar chapter by now for sure, but let's look at Matthew 24 and verse um, 30 and 31. We're going to see these four identical elements. Matthew 24, verse 30, and then they will see the sign of the Son of Man uh, <clears throat> appear in the sky, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the heaven with power and great glory, and he will send forth his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Did you catch all four elements in there? We have the coming of the Son of Man, Matthew 24, and verse 30. We have his coming in glory, Matthew 24, verse 30. It was power and great glory. We have his coming with the angels. He'll send forth his angels, Matthew 24, 31. And again, we have uh, the kingdom. He is coming to establish his kingdom. We see that where he comes with power, with dunas, with might and strength and ability. And also we see that in the parallel text uh, in Luke 21. In verse 31 of Luke 21, uh, Jesus says, When you see all these things take place, know that the kingdom of heaven is near. Okay, so his coming in the clouds with power, with his angels, was to establish his kingdom. And in verse 34, Jesus places the fulfillment of all of those elements in his generation. Verily, verily, I say unto you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. So the same elements of Matthew 25... 31 are found in Matthew 24, 30 and 31, but Jesus places the fulfillment of all those eschatological elements in the first century generation. Go with me now to Matthew 16. Let's take a look at verses 27 and 28, and once again, we'll see these four identical eschatological elements. Matthew 16, 27 and 28. For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then he will pay every man according to his deeds. Truly, I say to you, there are some uh, of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Did you catch them all here? <laughs> we have the coming of the Son of Man in glory, and specifically, it is in the glory of his Father. And if you compare that with John 17, verse 5, where Jesus, uh, just before, obviously, his crucifixion and following ascension, he says, Father, glorify me to get, uh, uh, with the glory that I had with you before the world began. So upon his ascension, Jesus would be glorified uh, once again with the glory that he, uh, that he carried and that uh, he manifested in his pre-incarnate existence 
with the Father. Therefore, his coming in glory would be his coming in the glory of the Father. Okay, you follow that? So once again, just not to get sidetracked, we have the coming of the Son of Man. That's the first element. We have uh, his coming in the glory of the Father. We have uh, his coming with the angels. That's the, that's the third element. And it's to establish his kingdom. Ma uh, Matthew 16, verse 28. And of course, in verse 28, once again, Jesus places the fulfillment of all of these elements, this coming of the Son of Man in glory with his angels to establish the kingdom. He says, verily, I say unto you, there are some of those who are standing here which not, will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So this coming in Matthew 16, 27, 28, which is the coming of the Son of Man in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25, 31, would be fulfilled in the lifetime of Jesus Jesus's contemporary generation. That's powerful stuff. These two uh, parallel texts limit the judgment at the coming of the Son of Man in glory with his angels to establish his kingdom in Matthew 25, 31 and following to the first century generation. And as we'll see, this is the judgment of Israel, of all Israel. As a matter of fact, look in Matthew 16, 27, we see that this judgment would be the repaying of every man according to his deeds. Remember from the last video, that was the judgment of Romans chapter 2, to reward every man according to his deeds at the righteous judgment of God. And also, we see in Matthew uh, 24, 31, it is the time for his gathering together of the elect. That correlates to the, uh, the sheep in Matthew 25, 31. This is the gathering uh, of, of the righteous remnant of Israel out of the, the body of Moses who had rejected him, who were the goats in Matthew 25, 31. So once again, we'll get into all of that, but simply understand, regardless of what any futuristic uh, eschatological paradigm will teach the judgment at the coming of the son of man in his glory with the angels to establish his kingdom in matthew 25 31 and following must be limited to the generation of jesus's contemporary disciples to his generation and we'll pick it up next time and dive into this more next time on answers on eschatology bye for now